Hey guys, welcome back to Fancy Tip. My name is Julian, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Washington Capitals. We're going to be talking about their players and which players I think are worth it for you to draft in your upcoming fantasy draft. Before we get started, guys, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. I'm trying to hit a thousand subs this year, and we are almost there, so every subscription really helps. Thank you so much, guys. Without further ado, let's jump right into their projected lines. So based on their training camp, it looks like their top line is going to be Ovechkin, Kuznetsov, and Tom Wilson. That second line, Mantha, Lars Eller, and Sprong. And that third line, Connor Sheary, Hendricks LaPierre, and TJ Oshie. So the guy being drafted the earliest on Washington is obviously Alexander Ovechkin. Been like that for many, many years. That shouldn't surprise anyone. I like Ovechkin this year because he is very determined to catch Gretzky's scoring record. And to do that, he's going to have to go off for the next few years. This year being very important because he's only going to get older. So he's going to really want to put a lot of emphasis this season. The dude's definitely going to go out and score a lot of goals, which makes him a pretty good pick in drafts. Right now he's going 11.3, which I think is a tad bit early, but I don't absolutely hate it. He is a little bit more valuable in hitting leagues. So if you are in a hitting league, he may be worth his ADP of 11.3. If you're not in a hitting league, I might wait a little bit more for him. But if you do decide to take him with your first round pick, not the worst decision in the world. Next is John Carlson. And last year, he had a bit of a down season with 44 points in 52 games. But if that's a down season for John Carlson, I'm kind of excited to see what he can do this year. He's a guy who could easily hit 70 points in a season. And I think he can do that again this year. He's definitely a top five defenseman. And if you want an elite defenseman on your team, which is definitely encouraged, John Carlson definitely fits the bill. Next is Evgeny Kuznetsov. And for the life of me, I cannot figure out why Kuznetsov is being drafted so high. After an abysmal season last year, you'd think he'd be going much later in drafts, but he's going at 67.1. He's also locked in at center, which isn't that valuable because there's so many centermen available in drafts. Now, don't get me wrong. He's slated to begin the season with Ovechkin, right? So he could potentially put up a really, really strong year. But there are guys who I like more than him who are going at more than double his ADP, like Sean Couturier of the Philadelphia Flyers going at over 140 ADP. So if you're going to draft a center, I don't recommend drafting Evgeny Kuznetsov, not as early as he's gone. Next is Ilya Samsonov, and he's currently slated to share the goaltending duties with Vitek Vanacek. We have no idea what that split is going to look like. It could end up being 50-50, in which case drafting Samsonov at 71.9? Mm, not so great. I'm not sure what it's going to look like. I think Samsonov will get more starts. I think he's going to get something like 60%. But even then... 60% is not that much, and there are goaltenders being drafted later who are going to get a lot more starts. On top of that, Washington's division is super tough, so they may not get as many wins as a lot of people are expecting them to. I'm not crazy about Sansonov, but I don't necessarily hate it either, since he should get the bulk of the starts for Washington, but he's not someone I'll personally be drafting. Next is TJ Oshie being drafted around 90.4, and I think that's too early for TJ Oshie. I have him around 90th best forward. He's just being ranked way too high because he had a really strong season last year. He scored 22 goals in 53 games, but he's not going to replicate that. He had a really high shooting percentage. That's not sustainable for this season, and he's being ranked as if it was. So I don't love Oshie, and right now he's practicing on that third line doesn't look great for his fantasy value. I'm staying away from Oshie this year, especially where he's being drafted. Next is Nicholas Backstrom, and I like drafting Backstrom as late as he's going, right? Backstrom is a guy who's going to be a point per game, and drafting him around 93 could be a real steal. The thing is, his health is a little bit in question. He's probably not going to be ready for the first week of the season, but I'm not going to let that deter me from drafting him. You can shove him on IR or IR plus spot, and you can use another centerman to replace him for that first week. The dude's going to get like a point per game this year, like he always does. The thing is, those games that he doesn't get a point, he's going to do pretty much nothing for you because he doesn't shoot a whole lot, and his peripherals are basically nothing. So it's a risk that you're going to have to be willing to take with Nicholas Backstrom, and you don't have to take a centerman at this range either. Next is Tom Wilson, currently going around 130 overall, and 
I don't mind him at this range. He's a scumbag of a player, but if you have to draft him at this range, it's not bad at all. The dude's playing first line with Alexander Ovechkin. So if that sticks, he definitely has a lot of value at this ADP. Also, if you're in a league that has penalty minutes, Tom Wilson becomes super, super valuable. Next is Anthony Mantha. And right now he's practicing on the second line with Eller and Sprong. And I'm not super crazy about that line combination. Once Backstrom gets back and replaces Hendrik LaPierre on the third line, Anthony Mantha's line with Eller is going to become the third line. So I, I don't love it. And I don't think he's going to do that well if that's his deployment this year. That being said, they could easily move him around the lineup and then suddenly he could have a lot of value. It remains to be seen, right? For now, I'm not super high on him. Next is Vitek Vanacek, and he's the other half of Washington's goal-tending tandem. I think he's going to get 40 to 50% of the starts this year, so I'm not super crazy about him, but definitely not the worst draft pick if you're in a really, really deep league and a lot of goalies are being taken. Then Vitek Vanacek has a good amount of value, and he could end up being the starter as well, right? That's not set in stone that Samsonov is going to get more starts. So I don't absolutely hate Vanacek where he's currently going. Next is Justin Schultz, and he had a pretty nice season last year with 24 points in 44 games. But he got a lot of those points when Carlson was out for the couple of games that he was out. I don't think Schultz has a lot of value as long as Carlson is healthy. If Carlson gets injured, suddenly Schultz does have a solid amount of value. I'm not crazy about drafting him, but if you're in a deep, deep league, he's not the worst pick in the world. Next is Dmitry Orlov, and I'm not super crazy about Dmitry Orlov either. I like Schultz better than Orlov, if I'm being honest, because Schultz is the number two defenseman in that offense, and Orlov is the number three. He's not going to see more than second power play on Washington, and it doesn't make him all that valuable. If you're in an insanely deep league, then I'd consider him, but other than that, there's really no reason to be drafting Dmitry Orlov. And last but not least are rookies Connor McMichael and Hendrix LaPierre. Right now they're competing for that third line center spot, which is great, but Backstrom isn't going to miss that much time from what it seems like. So whoever wins that spot doesn't really have any kind of fantasy value. And even if Backstrom wasn't coming back soon, they're on the third line. So their value would be pretty limited anyway. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. Please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Hope you guys enjoyed the content, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tipped.